Hey guys, what is up? It's your girl Grace Tori, and I'm back with a whole new podcast episode. I'm really excited for today's episode. It is wedding season. Weddings are in full swing. Beautiful, gorgeous spring weddings are everywhere. And guess what comes along with this? The AITA Reddit page is just blowing up with wedding submissions. And personally, these are my favorite types of submissions because it includes so many like things that are just recipes for large drama, like your entire family, people who don't necessarily get along, lots of lots of money, lots of time and emotions put into something. And while some of these people are suffering at the expense of our entertainment, I do love drama that I am not actively involved in. I love hearing about it. I love giving my opinion, but while not being involved. So this is like the perfect thing for me. It's right up my alley. So if you also are like me and you're nosy and you want to hear the tea and wedding AITAs are like a vibe, then definitely stick around. I thought I would switch it up for today's podcast episode. I wanted to just incorporate some story times. I haven't really done that many recently. So that's what we're going to be doing. Before I jump in, don't forget to follow on whatever platform you're currently listening or watching on. I upload every single Sunday or Wednesday. Also, don't forget to leave a rating, review, a comment, whatever. Let me know if you like these story time episodes or if you prefer my more like advice type episodes. Let me know the vibes there. I want to hear from you and do more of what you guys are interested in. But yeah, P.S. some of the AITA submissions that are wedding themed are super, super famous. Like some of the most famous ones that I have personally heard are probably wedding themed. So all of these that I'm going to be reading are from the past month to ensure that you most likely haven't heard them. So some of them aren't like super, super popular, but they're still really good. So yeah, I want to make sure we all got some entertainment out of this and it wasn't the same story we've heard a thousand times. Let's go ahead and jump in now. I'm Grace Story, and you're listening to That Girl the Podcast. Grab a beverage of choice and settle in, because the new episode is starting now. AITA for choosing a wedding date that is the same month as my sister's wedding. I, 30 female, and my boyfriend, 30 male, are unofficially engaged. When we started dating in 2022, we discussed marriage, kids, etc., and figured we'd probably want to get married in 2025. At the start of this year, my boyfriend asked to go ring shopping but wants to surprise me with a proposal, so we're holding off on an official announcement. The thing is, we've been really excited and talking about it a lot to the point where we accidentally started planning the wedding. I know it sounds bizarre, but honestly, we've enjoyed laying the framework in secret because there were no outside opinions and big decisions will be fate accompli by the time we announce it. Also, when he told his family that we were ring shopping, his sister-in-law said it was weird that we were ring shopping before getting engaged so we're not keen to be told that we're being weird again. My sister, 33 female, and her fiance, 34 male, got engaged two years ago and there were no wedding plans, but last year she mentioned potentially doing it in 2025 and told us to block out June through September. Maybe I should have said something then, but it seemed a bit silly and obnoxious to be like, I think I'm getting married then too, when we really hadn't made that commitment and she was the one who was engaged. Now to where I might be TA. My boyfriend found the perfect venue and the only viable date they had was in August, so we provisionally booked it. While talking to my sister last night, she said she is now thinking about August, so I had to tell her. She got angry because she already told everyone not to make plans for those months so that we can be available for her wedding. I suggested she could choose another month since she hasn't planned anything, but I got engaged first, so I should have first choice. It's kind of what she said in response. She also says planning a wedding at the same time will split the family's attention, which is so bad for both of us. So should I wait until after her wedding to get engaged? But that, So I should wait until after her wedding to get engaged, but that's a no from me. Her final argument, and the only one that makes me question my decision, is that it's cool to do this considering I know how long she waited to be able to have her moment, and this is really important to her. She and her fiancé have been together for 10 years before he proposed, and I know she'd been waiting for at least five of those years. I don't want to hurt my sister, but I really don't see the issue. Yes, it's not the ideal situation, but she's having 20 guests at a destination wedding in Italy. And we're having a traditional wedding with 150 guests in the town where I grew up. There won't be guests overlap apart from the immediate family, so as long as it's not on the same day, it should be fine, right? The venue we chose really is perfect for what we want, and I'll be at work for I'll be away for work for a big chunk of the year, so the date is ideal. We could cancel and search for a different venue, but I really don't want to unless I'm being TA here. 
My family know now, but none of them want to get involved. So, AITA. This is a hard one. Um, I think that she's not TA. I, I don't want to say it because I don't want to get flagged. Um, but this is why. Hear me out. I don't think she is because one, one's a destination wedding and the other is not, which means there's more prep for the destination wedding, but that's more prep on the person getting married than on all of the guests. So, like, she's prepping, like, tickets and everything. Like, all of that is done months ahead of time for the guests. Like, probably two months at the absolute minimum before the wedding. Everyone knows what they're doing. Everything's paid for before that. Like, my best friend had a destination wedding, and we knew what we were doing, where we were going. They had a wedding planner. Like, I know that there's different types of situations, but you know exactly what you're doing. It's very planned. You have hotel rooms blocked off for you. Like, you should have, as a guest, like, you should have your hotel and everything planned months ahead of time. So it's not like they're making last minute decisions about this wedding. Like, even as a guest, they have everything sorted out months ahead of time, hopefully. And like she mentioned, there's not even that much guest overlap. And I don't think the immediate family should be surprised. Like, I don't think they should be surprised that they're getting married around the same time if they are both in committed, serious relationships. Like, they see it coming down the pipeline. Also, she mentioned how she doesn't want the attention to be split between the families. Like, the sister mentioned that. But if truly the poster is saying, like, they don't want the family involved and they've already planned a lot of the wedding, then I don't see that being an issue because they're really just going to be telling them, hey, this is our venue. Hey, these are our colors. Hey, this is our plan. Like, you know, I feel like a lot of that is already planned, not involved with the family, whereas the other sister wants the family to be involved, it sounds like, and that's totally fine. Like, it's your wedding. If you want your family to be involved, if you want your family to be a part of the planning, all, all power to you. But one of them wants that, one of them doesn't. So really, I don't think it's a big deal. Especially if it's like only one destination wedding and the other one literally is in the hometown. So really not that many people are going to have to travel. It's not a big deal. Like the only thing I can see kind of being an issue is maybe the cost of like the destination wedding being a burden on people's budgets. So maybe they don't get as nice of like a gift for the other sister. But... Like I said, they should have paid for a lot of the big costs, like the how the room and stuff ahead of time. So, I mean, like after my friend's destination wedding, was I really poor after? Yes, but it was also in Vegas. And so we were like doing Vegas things like drinking and like whatever. So in my opinion, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. Like she said, it's not the ideal situation. But if you're both getting married, like, you can both have your cake and eat it, too. There's nothing wrong with getting married in the same month. And I think to say to every single family member, hey, we are not even really planning that hard, but you need to block off the entire summer just in case is a little unfair, especially considering they've been engaged for such a long time. Like, it's kind of hard to take that seriously and say, like, okay, definitively they are going to get married during this time. And we also want to get married during this time. Um, so we shouldn't. Like, the only thing I could say is maybe there should have been a little bit more communication there. But also, as soon as she found out, she told her. It's not like she was keeping anything from her. So in my opinion, she's not the asshole. Let's see what the top comment is. Your sister is being ridiculous because she allowed herself to be strung along for 10 years. She gets a day, not four bloody months. She's also had two years to pick a date and make a plan. Your perfect venue fell into your lap. Book it, happy planning. Not the A word. Again, I don't want to say it and get flagged. Ah! So, yeah, I agree. I mean, being quote-unquote strung along for 10 years, that's a stretch. Like, a 10-year relationship doesn't always necessarily mean that you're strung along. Like, I know people that were engaged for 10 years and that's because they chose to do that like they chose to travel they chose to do whatever they maybe or they were dating for 10 years not engaged for 10 years like maybe they started dating at like 15 and then they got engaged at 25 like you don't know the situation so to say string along is a little bit of a stretch but other than that I do agree like she's had all this time and such so you know 
AITA for being honest when my dad asked where my mom was on my wedding morning. Oh, I know this is going to be good, guys. I recently married my beautiful wife, Amanda. That's like a fake name. She isn't the biggest fan of my mom, and that is probably mutual. I don't know. Amanda knows I am on her side and here to support any boundaries. She was concerned about how my mom would behave at the wedding and admitted to not wanting to spend any more time with her than absolutely necessary. I ended up going to my mom's husband, quote unquote Chris, another fake name, and asking if he had any thoughts so we could ha all have a peaceful day and no bridesmaids would need to accidentally spill anything. At first he didn't want to help, but he didn't want my mom to feel embarrassed and gave in. He said it was already going to be a long day for her, so he recommended no pre-wedding festivities and said he would get her out of the rehearsal dinner early so she had enough time in between. He took her out right after dinner and took her somewhere else. The day of the wedding, she was not invited to get ready with the bridal party or have a champagne breakfast. Instead, Chris took her to the beach for a long run to get her energy out, then took her to a nice breakfast, home for some one-on-one -on -one attention, and let her know he had a special day planned the following day. She got her makeup done at their house and came just in time for the wedding. My stepmom, Lexi, another fake name, was however invited to get ready with the bridal party. I guess she told my dad my mom wasn't there and he asked me. I told him the truth about that Chris was taking care of her as it would be too long a day for her. I guess he told someone else because my mom found out and was furious. She asked how could I humili humiliate her and said I'm a shitty son. She said I could have said nothing and accused me of not loving her. She said she knows the truth that we just don't like her or want her around. Chris also got mad and said he regretted helping me. I felt kind of bad after the encounter and was wondering, A-I-T-A. Yeah, you're the, uh, big time, big time buddy. So let me say my thoughts on this and then we'll read the comments. Um, one, you're treating her like she's a dog. You need to get her energy out. Like she is like an older, you know how like people have older dogs and it's like, oh, this is like a highly reactive, older, grumpy dog. They need to like do their thing and like maybe not talk to many people, but like it's because of that. Like we don't want them to feel hurt. Maybe not even an older dog, just a highly reactive dog. Like, people are like, oh, my dog is highly reactive. Um, I need to get his running out, and you can't talk to him, and you can't be around him, and da da da, da. Like, that's what the vibes this is giving me. And she's very obviously not a dog. Um, she has, like, feelings. She is your mom, like, raised you. I don't know if, like, she, how active she was in raising you, but um, still your mom. And I totally understand estranged parents and not wanting to have your parents even at your wedding at all like I totally understand that but to have your stepmom participate and not your mom is a huge huge thorn like that is like the nail in the coffin for me like it's either both or none that is extremely shitty that is extremely wrong horrible absolutely awful and then everybody to be in on it except for her horrible Horrible. I hate, like, no. Horrible. Let's read the top comment. Dude, you have got to learn to not share information between two divorced people. You put yourself squarely in the path of this firestorm. Lexi, who's the stepmom, has a big mouth and your father should have minded his own damn business. But I'm guessing he just had to point out how his wife was there and X was not and that's just some sort of win for him. Well, not intentional and I hope you... Take this as a lesson learned, but you've tipped into YTA category, not because of your actions on the day, but for not being able to prevent yourself from sharing information that on some level you knew had the potential to blow up. Let me read one more comment because I want to, I just want to see this one kind of got me. I get that your mom needed to be managed to make the day as peaceful as possible since it appeared she causes drama sometimes. Your stepmom also drummed up drama. Your dad should have minded his business. You should have kept quiet about the plan. And your mom should learn to act better so she doesn't have to be managed like a toddler. Edit. Would have been nice to know she regularly struggles from severe medicated ADHD in the post rather than finding out via comments that OP has unrealistic expectations for her condition. Change to YTA. Yeah. Um... A, what? Like, she has severe... As someone who also has ADHD, you cannot help... Like, you can only help it to a certain extent. You... Especially when you're, like, in a situation... Like, I know for me, my stress... When I'm extremely stressed, my ADHD seems to be worse. And so, your, your son getting married, you're around your ex-husband and his wife. Like, there are a lot of... You know, you're around immediate family. There's a lot of things that probably would stress her out 
and make her, if she's similar to myself where like stress brings out your ADHD, it would probably make things worse. So I can understand doing certain things to help her mitigate chances of something happening with her ADHD, like, you know, having things set up where like, hey mom, if you need to go sit down for a few minutes, like I made sure there was a space where it's just you in there, like you have a private spot where you can go be alone if you need a few minutes or like hey like I made these accommodations for you and treating it more like a disability rather than a burden because like I know that I am gonna have ADHD for the rest of my life like it's something that you're I'm gonna have to work with just like the other mental health things I have and other people have like we all know that for the most part they're pretty much lifetime things that you're going to have to work with. However, when other tr people treat it like a burden and not a disability, like that's, oh, sorry guys. It's time to take out the trash. It's trash day. Um, yeah. When people treat you like a burden rather than having a disability that like can be mitigated in certain ways, but only to a certain extent and like not using compassion and understanding, absolutely horrible, especially when it's your mom. Like, no, absolutely not. Okay, moving on. W-I-B-T-A. If I didn't go to my son's wedding that I was re-invited to. Oh, this one. Yikes. I will try to be as clear as possible. And if you have any questions, please use an info. Also on phone. I'm guessing that he's like talking into the phone maybe. I don't know. What's an I-N-F-O? Is it info? I-N-F-O? Someone educate me, please. This is about my son, Ryan. When Ryan was a senior in college, he informed me one of his one night stands told him she was pregnant. I informed him that he should get a DNA test to be sure that he is the father. So he did that. And when the result came back, he started to date her since he was the father. The woman, Shelly, has never liked me. The first time I met her, she made a comment about how I must think so little of her to convince Ryan to get a DNA test. The relationship started on a horrible night. No, no, excuse me. First off, the rational thing is to get a DNA test. Like, I, like I know I'm a woman, so, like, obviously it's mine <laughs> if I were to get pregnant. But, like, if, like, I would not be upset if I had a one-night stand and the guy was, like, I should get, a D, like, a DNA test. Because it's a one-night stand. Like, you don't know that person's life story. Like, I don't think that's something to get upset about. That's literally, I'm hoping that with, like, pregnancy hormones and she doesn't actually truly believe that if you get a DNA test, you're a horrible person. Like, this is a lifetime commitment. A child is a lifetime commitment. I would to like totally understand if a guy that I literally had n a one night stand with was like, before I commit to this lifetime commitment, I want to make sure that like it is my commitment to participate in, you know? Um, anyway, Shelly integrated into the family and our relationship didn't warm up. Overall, I just avoided her for the most part. I was civil at events, but we were not buddies. They got engaged about two years ago. Around the last Halloween, Shelly was telling the family I was saying horrible things about her. I wasn't. It was my word against her, and my son gave me an ultimatum. Did I apologize, or I won't be invited to the wedding? I refused to apologize for something I didn't do, so I was uninvited to their wedding. At Christmas, she told the family that if I was invited, then they will not go. Wait, what? At Christmas, she told the family that if I was invited, then they will not go. So if they, this parent went to Christmas. I, did I miss, I don't know if it, this is like the dad or the mom, not that it makes a huge difference, but I would like to know. Continuing on. Big drama and the family split the festivities into two days. My sister and husband have been on my side for all this. Okay, so it's the mom. Unless they're gay. We're going to get to the bottom of this. I'm assuming it's the mom because she said husband, but again, like, could be, I don't think that they're, I don't know. Continuing on. The wedding is in two weeks. I received a call from Ryan last night. It boiled down to that Shelly admitted a line to him. That she saw how sad he was that I would have wouldn't be at the wedding and told him the truth. He re-invited me to the wedding and I told him I'm unsure and will think about it. I don't want to go to the wedding for a few reasons. I don't support the wedding. I don't wish to be around my daughter-in-law. I am very mad that she did this in the first place. My reputation in the family has been affected by her lies. And finally, she hasn't apologized. The truth is getting around to the rest of the family and opinions are split. Some think I will be a jerk for not going, and others think I am justified in not going. Also, I am unsure if I want a relationship with Ryan if he is with Shelly. Edit. All the family know she lied. My son cleared that up with everyone, so my reputation is clear in that. 
there's updates, but I want to give my opinion before we read those. So, I kind of have two different thoughts. Initially, when she, she, I'm assuming it's, it's the mom, was like, hey, she and I don't like each other over something that was said. Like, my first thought was maybe you should just let it go and, like, be the bigger person. But as it continued, I get it. Like, this is probably, like, a long lasting situation where like every time they were around each other it was like this and that is understandable so on one vein I'm like okay you're the parent like you should maybe be the bigger person and just go but then on the other hand I'm like you are all adults and you are absolutely allowed to set boundaries and say I don't want this person to be in my life um personally if I were Ryan, I would be postponing the wedding because there's a lot, like, if she lied about that and was willing to lie about that and literally potentially ruin your relationship with a parent, um, then I'm assuming he was close with at one point if he would felt okay to say, hey, I think I might have a child on the way. Like, if you are not close with your parent, you're not going to call them and say, hey, um, I might have accidentally gotten someone pregnant. Like... Trust me, that is not something you tell a parent you're not close with. So, I'm going to assume that they were really close at one point. Um, and now, like, she ruined their relationship on a lie just for fun. Like, I would totally be postponing the wedding. And I don't think that they're the asshole. Update number one. I've decided to not go. I don't believe it will be good for me. And I'll explain to Ryan why I'm choosing this. I also don't think a wedding is the time to reconcile. I also will explain that receiving no apology from either of them factors into my decision. Even if I got one now, I still won't go since I know it is forced. He is an adult. He will need to take the first steps to fix this, not me. Edit 2. For anyone that was asking, my husband already didn't plan to go. His siblings will make their own choices and his aunt isn't going. I don't know about the rest of the family. So when she says that way, like, I don't think this is the place to reconcile. That is a very good point. Like, you don't want to bring drama into the wedding, especially if it involves the bride and the groom, because it is their day. Like, whether they're, whether the, the bride is a horrible person or not, like, it's still her day. Um, and if they are choosing to get married, they know what they're getting into. He knows that she lied, and he knows that she's put a, a you know, a riff in your r relationship. And if he is still choosing to continue to marry her, he knows that he's an adult. He knows the consequences. So that being said, like, I wouldn't go. I, I agree, like, I think it's on Ryan to make his own decision, but as the parent and with the knowledge and, like, situation that you are in, I wouldn't go either. Top comment says, in my opinion, I do not think you should go to the wedding until you get a proper apology from Shelly. She does not get to tell lies about you and then skate off scot-free. She owes you an apology. Let your son know this requirement as soon as possible and make sure you get a proper apology, not a fake apology. For example, I'm sorry you felt that way about what I said. NTA. Yeah. What do you guys think about that one? Let's do one more. AITA for uninviting my mom to my wedding after she called my fiance embarrassing. Oh boy. I am engaged to Tiffany, fake name, and I love her with all my heart. Unfortunately, my mom has never seemed supportive of our relationship, and it's pretty clear to me she doesn't enjoy Tiffany. This has been a huge point of contention between my mother and I, and I've made it clear that she needs to begin making an effort if she wants to be in our lives. She continues to try to get away with excluding her, so I have had to come down hard with boundaries. Recently, my mom was going to a touring production of a Broadway show that Tiffany has been dying to see but was unable to get tickets to. My mom was going with her sister who woke up with a fever and chills, so she was going to invite her secretary as her friends happened to be out of town. I told my mom that it was ridiculous that Tiffany wasn't even her fourth choice. I explained this was deeply hurtful and asked her to consider her future daughter-in-law over her assistant. She ended up letting Tiffany go, but when it was time to go, I saw my mom's face change. Tiffany is a huge girly girl and just loves to dress up, which unfortunately she doesn't get many chances to do at the moment. She went all out for the show in a floor-length sparkly number with her hair done up and beautiful makeup. My mom was wearing flare leggings, a sweater, and converse and didn't even try to hide her disgust. She asked if Tiffany was aware that no one dressed up for the Performing Arts Center. Tiffany admitted she might have gone a little overboard but explained she just loves to dress up. My mom complained that she was going to feel embarrassed. I told her to stop and they went on their way. Well, it has recently come to my attention that my mom texted my aunt, including pictures of Tiffany, taken without her knowledge, and complained about how embarrassed she was. 
She said everyone was looking at them and some people were snickering. My aunt was making jokes back and I became furious. I demanded my mom explain to me and she said I was being ridiculous. She said she could talk to her sister about whatever she wanted and we needed to grow up. She blamed me for pushing Tiffany on her in the first place and claimed it was super embarrassing and everyone was giving Tiffany weird looks. I lost it and told her she was uninvited from the wedding if that's what she really thinks. She got really quiet and said okay if that was what I really wanted and said I was unwilling to compromise or make things work. Now the rest of the family is calling me an asshole and saying I will regret not having my mom at my wedding. But Tiffany feels very happy and supported. Okay. Um, I personally feel like there's some things missing. Like, why do Tiffany and your mom not get along? Did they say that? Maybe I just disassociated through that part. Hold on. Never seemed supportive. There has to be a reason why. I'm sorry. There has to be a reason. Anyway, I feel like your mom is... I feel like everyone's the asshole, except for Tiffany. Because you and your mom should have talked this out. Maybe you shouldn't have pushed Tiffany on her if you knew that it was going to cause a problem between the two of them. Like, you know they don't get along. Why would you send them somewhere just the two of them? Um, but also, your mom sending pictures, that is so immature and uncalled for. In my opinion, I think everyone except for Tiffany sucks. Um, I totally understand not inviting her to your wedding. In my opinion, your wedding is you and your spouse's or future spouse's day. You can uninvite, you can invite, you can do whatever you want. It's your day. However, you need to suffer the consequences. Like, if you don't invite someone, you need to be okay with the consequences of how that could play out. Potentially losing that relationship, whatever it may be. You need to understand that before you're just like, oh, it's fine. Like, it was my wedding. No. So, I think everyone's the asshole. Reddit voted that this he is the asshole let's see what their comments are never in a million years did i think i would side with the mother-in-law over the wife in a story like this but yta your mom is not obligated to invite your wife to things especially ones one-on-one -on -one things your wife wasn't being excluded from a family event and forcing your mom to give her extra ticket to someone she doesn't get along with is wrong i love to dress up as much as the next person but a floor-length gown is way too much especially when your mom didn't want to invite her in the first place that's true i did disassociate a little bit with the floor length gown. Is it a formal one? Is it like a spring type one that you would wear to a wedding? Like what type of floor length gown are we talking? Because I've seen some very cute ones that you could wear to a play, but like if this is like a, a prom dress, then absolutely not. So yeah, um, someone else said hard disagree. Everyone's the asshole except Tiffany. She's maybe a little cringe at worst, but so what? None of what you said here is wrong. OP sucks for trying to force his mom to take someone she doesn't like to the show. A gown is indeed too much and kind of embarrassing. I don't think that really matters, but I get that the mom might have been extra unhappy about the evening because of it. But absolutely none of that could ever justify taking sneaky photos of someone and sending them around to mock them. I don't care if Tiffany dressed up in a Halloween costume for the show. That's some mean girl high school bully levels of BS that wouldn't be acceptable among teenagers. To say nothing of a grown woman. Oh, he posted the dress somewhere? Where? Wait, I want to see it. Oh. Oh. Okay. Guys, I'm, I, if you're, like, watching this, I'll share it. It's, like, a sparkly gold floor-length prom dress. Dang. Okay. I, I mean, I am someone who believes that someone, like, you can wear whatever you want. If you want to wear a floor length gown, go off. Like this person said, yeah, it can be a little weird, but go off. Like if you want to do that, who am I to tell you no? Um, anyway, though, yeah, I love when Reddit agrees with me. I mean, obviously, overall, they didn't because it was not like he's the only one who is crowned uh, the asshole. But I think that everyone is except for Tiffany. Um did he create the situation that, you know, made it possible for for this to happen? Yes, I think he should have had some foresight. I think he should have been a little bit more um, prepared for that to go wrong. A little bit more thoughtful about it, a little bit more strategic. But yeah, I think everyone is.
So yeah, that is today's episode. If you want me to do a part two, let me know. As usual, I saved a bunch extra, so I have plenty more to talk about. This was fun. I really enjoyed it. Like I mentioned earlier, I upload every single Sunday and Wednesday. If you're watching this on the Wednesday it comes out, I hope you have a great night. If you're watching this on any other day, I hope you have a great morning, afternoon, or night. I love you guys so, so much, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, guys.